uh, we realized that you need to know how to lever and unlever beta in order to do the simulation uh, for M&A in wine country. So I'm making a brief video here describing the process for how we lever beta. And I'll go through a brief example, a little fictional example for you of uh, levering beta. So for the to do the simulation, we have given you an asset beta, but you need to have the levered beta, which is because of the fact that when we have debt, that will increase the cost of equity, the required return on equity, because now equity is riskier since they must pay the interest payments on the debt. So we're going to use something known as the Hamada equation, which I'll show you on the next slide, to lever our asset beta. And then you will use that levered beta to calculate the cost of equity. So with the levered beta that I'm showing you how to calculate now, then you'll use that cost of equity along with the after-tax cost of debt to calculate the WAC. Now, we will use a cost of equity that has a beta that is positive. But we will assume that the beta of debt is zero. So we will not have to worry about beta of debt. When you find the um, required return on debt, that's what you'll use. So the reason we're using the Hamada equation is because the increased use of debt will cause the cost of debt and equity to go up. So the Hamada equation, which I'll show you on the next slide, is an attempt to quantify this uh, increased cost of debt used due to financial leverage, meaning use of debt. Now, the unlevered beta of the firm represents the business risk as if it had no debt. The unlevered beta is also called the asset beta. All right, so this is the Hamada equation. It tells us that the levered beta is equal to the unlevered beta, beta U, multiplied by 1 plus the debt equity ratio multiplied by 1 minus the tax rate. If there weren't any taxes, we would know that having debt's just making the firm more risky. But by having taxes, something you'll learn when we look at capital structure, having taxes means that debt is a little bit beneficial because you can deduct your interest expense from your business other costs and your business revenues to get a lower taxable income. Interest expense is tax deductible, and that's why we multiply the debt equity ratio here by 1 minus the tax rate. Having a positive tax rate reduces the impact of leverage on our risk. So we need to calculate a project beta that reflects the risk of the project, and we need to pay attention to this use of debt in our capital structure. So this is just a simple Fictional company, MarTech, made-up company, doesn't mean anything. MarTech is going to be going into a new industry, electronics. And we're trying to figure out what would be the appropriate beta to use if they're in this industry. So remember that when we use the cost of equity, we use capital asset pricing model along with the risk-free rate for which we'll use the treasury rate and the expected return on the market. So here, the risk-free rate is 8%. The expected return on an average stock in the market is 13.65%. Now, 
the average debt equity ratio in the electronics industry is 25%, and the beta for the electronics industry is 1.24. Their tax rate is 35%. Now, Martech has the same tax rate, but Martech's going to use a different debt equity ratio from the industry. Now, I'm going to show you how we're going to calculate Martech's debt equity ratio. Right now, what I've given you is the weight of debt. The weight of debt is 40%. So what must be the weight of equity? Well, if the weight of debt is 40%, the weight of equity must be 60%. So we'll calculate the debt equity ratio on the next slide. Um, I want to also tell you the pre-tax cost of debt is 10%. So we're going to calculate the levered beta for MarTech, then the required return on equity for MarTech, and then use that along with our uh, interest cost to get the WAC. So the first thing we're going to do is something you don't have to do for the project. For the project, we give you the asset beta, but I am going to show you if you were to get a the levered beta for another firm that's in your same industry, how you would unlever it. We use that same Hamada equation. The levered beta here is equal to the unlevered beta multiplied by 1 plus the 1 minus the tax rate times the debt equity ratio. So now I'm using the debt equity ratio of the industry and the tax rate of the industry and the uh, we're finding the unlevered our asset beta for the industry. 1.24 is the levered beta for the industry. We're solving for the unlevered or asset beta. We multiply that by 1 plus, this term in brackets, 1 minus the tax rate times the debt equity ratio of the industry. The 1 minus the tax rate is 0 0.65. 0 0.65 times 0.25 is 1.1625. So I multiply that by the unlevered beta to get the levered beta of 1.24. So what I'm going to do is to take this, both sides and divide by uh, 1.1625. So that will then give me the unlevered beta. In other words, what I'm saying here, I am dividing both sides of my equation, 1.24, and this term by 1.1625. So that my asset beta here is 1.1067. That's my unlevered or asset, sorry, not writing real well, asset beta. I think I'll print. Okay, my asset beta is my unlevered beta. Now what I need to do is what you're going to do for the project, relever the beta using the debt equity ratio that Martech's going to use. Again, 40% debt and 60% equity gives me a debt equity ratio of 0.4 divided by 0.6 or 0.6667. Again, I use my Hamada equation, the levered beta is the unlevered beta, this asset beta, multiplied by 1 plus 1 minus the tax rate times the debt equity ratio we're going to use. Now, when I look at this term here inside, 0.65 times 0.6667 is 0.4333. I add 1 to that term. And I multiply by the asset beta, 1.0667. That gives me a levered beta now of 1.52889. Notice that the levered beta for MarTech here is larger, in my example, than the 
levered beta for the industry because they're using a higher debt equity ratio. The industry was 0.25. For MarTech, it's 0.6667. A higher debt equity ratio leads to a higher levered beta. Now I take this new beta, my new levered beta, and put that into my capital asset pricing model equation, which tells me that the required return on equity is the risk-free rate plus the market risk premium times the beta of MarTech. The market risk premium here is the return on, I'm going to call that MRP, the market risk premium is the return on an average stock in the market, which we said was 13.65%, minus the 8% return on the risk-free or treasury. I then, that works out, of course, to be 5.65. I multiply that by my levered beta, 1.5289, and that is 8.6382%. I add that to my risk-free rate of 8%, and now I have the required return on equity using the levered beta. Now, I'll use that now to calculate my WAC. So I plug this, in, this required return on equity into the WAC, or weighted average cost of capital equation, which is the weight of debt times the after-tax cost of debt plus the weight of equity times the cost of equity. 40% is my weight of debt. 10% is my pre-tax cost of debt. The tax rate is 35%. So this first term here, 1 minus 0 0.35 is 0 0.65. 0 0.65 times 10 percent is 6.5%. Multiplied by the 0.4 weight gives me 2.6%, and my weight of equity is 60% times my required return on equity of 16.6382%. This term is 9.8829%, so that my required return, my WAC, is 12.5829%. I tend to hold on to four decimal places when I'm working through a problem. If I only ask for two places afterwards, I could just say 12.58% is my required, my WAC, my weighted average cost of capital. Now, you might say, what if I did not have any taxes? What would be the situation here? Well, now we're going to see that having debt makes the whole thing more risky. If I again unlever the beta, I will get an asset beta now with no debt, I mean with no taxes. My asset beta is higher, it's 0.992. Now, also, I now am multiplying not by one, um, by the same term I had before, which was, uh, 1.0667, but it's now I'm multiplying here by 1.6667. My new beta of equity, you can see, is higher. It's 1.6533. And now when I plug into my equation, taxes are not reducing my, my impact here. And so now my required return on equity is 17.34%. And my after-tax cost of debt is the same as my before-tax cost of debt, 10%. And now my required return for my WAC is 14.4%. So having taxes reduce the riskiness of having debt in the calculation of the cost of equity, and in the overall weighted average cost of capital. If you have any other questions, please feel free to call us or email us. This is how you unlevered beta. And again, I just want to remind you 
that we are going to assume that the beta of debt is zero. Thank you very much.